Welcome to Reveal the Legend Within Story Festival World Class Speakers Interviews. And today I am absolutely delighted to welcome Katerina Rees. I actually very first met Katerina in Los Angeles, but she's actually from Germany. And since then, I've been to her beautiful retreat uh, that she's restoring a 400 year old um, building to become a place of possibilities. Um, We've had coffee in London um, and been on an adventure ever since we met. She's an extraordinary woman who has completely defined her own life and is here today to talk about self-management and the key that that is. So self-management, what she says is that if you don't learn to manage yourself, you will miss the blink of your life, which I think is just the most emotional and resonant thing to say. So without further ado, welcome Katerina. Hello, thank you. So you are actually speaking to us from the, the Black Forest, from the mountain or the hills of Black Forest where you can see the Swiss Alps from, is that right? Yes, yes. I'm in a 400 years old farmhouse and Mostly we see the Swiss Alps when we have a clear view and we're almost like a thousand meters elevation from ground zero and um, yeah, in the middle of the forest. And it's just thing. beautiful up there. But that it's not always been like this. You actually started out in the field. In yes, the wine correct. fields at the bottom of the, of the forest, well, the Black Forest yes. Valley. Yes, so tell us more exactly. about that, because you're actually a well, you actually are one of the uh, very few wine women winemakers in the world, amongst other things. Yes, but that's how you started out. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So the whole um, my upbringing and where I was growing up was exactly down the hill, and by the age of sixteen, uh, I decided if I want to express how I see the world and, and get a little deeper into the knowledge and understanding of how the world works, I want to work in the field of wine. So I decided by the age of 16 to become a winemaker. Of course, the voices around and society in large was a little bit surprised because like my family is not a typical wine family and we don't have a winery. So typically, you you choose this path if you are from a wine family but i decided let's dig into it and try something new and so this is how my journey started when i was well 16. you actually dropped out of school to do it which is an incredibly audacious thing to do you're just like at 16 dropped out of school to become a winemaker a seven-year process exactly so I, I felt not really welcoming at school and also like by the age of 11, I think I was told I'm not expected to go on a higher educational path. So that's why I listened to my, you call it intuition or inner knowing. I was like, let's step out of this, I call it network and try something new. And if that, it's, um, that's when you look back, that was the start of this, um, self-management and missing the blink of your life idea but do you um, you know that's so many of us have been told by society what our story is what we're destined for and yet here you were at 16 going nah I don't actually believe that and that's how you ended up with the uh, but you ended up not only a winemaker but you have your own wine label but so tell us the journey between learning the, the how to make wine literally in the muddy fields in the winter with the pr pruning those grapevines to having your own wine label because I know that there's a large very important piece in there you became um, a brand a brand manager for for a, literally a global wine brand Yes, so when I started in the field of wine and as you were saying, being outside in nature and observing nature, I decided, okay, I have to have a vision for myself to go where I wanted, what I wanna do next. So I looked into it and I decided to study winemaking to become an enologist. And while I was studying, I was like, okay, let's focus on 
because I was curious how you're gonna able to build a brand. So I was able to work with one of the incredible champagne companies and learn on hand hands on like how to build a brand. So afterwards, I was I had the ability to know how to make wine and by studying with brand builders how to build a brand so at the end I combined everything and was able to have my own wine brand but it's almost not as simple as that because you were extremely successful as a wine as a brand executive you were c-suite you know you had the expense accounts the gorgeous car flying all over the world literally you know being handed a you know a you you launched one of those um, energy drinks uh, onto the world. So what changed? What, what little thing did you notice that took you in another direction? Of course, as I was saying from an early age, I had this, you can call it inner knowledge or intuition. And of course, on the course of my life, I maybe lost it a little bit, So, but when I was in the middle of the height of my career, I tried to remember to go back and 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 uh, start to have, a, you would say, a, a journaling practice. So to to understand more what I really want in life and how I want to be in 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 life itself, in this world. So in this world, exactly. So. I remember start doing some uh, uh, awareness exercise, or I would call it now, like how I entered the, the world of conscious living was like while we were on a regular business trip and traveling around Germany and coaching all our sales forces, we had a tough long day sitting around the table and at the end of the day, of course, you, you could choose to go out for a drink. And we were spending the day in, in Berlin and it was nice to, to get into this all upscale, high-end hip restaurants and bars. But I remember when I entered the hotel, I, I have seen um, a sign next to the entrance and it was saying spa world. And I was like, oh, what, what, what was it saying? Maybe I should enter the spa world instead of going out for dinner and having a drink and, and a nice dinner. So I signed myself up for the massage. And while I was having the massage, the, the therapist um, ask me, how are you going to drive your car? How are you going to hold on your steering wheel? I was like, mostly, yeah, I, ha I hold it really hard and, and, and strongly. And he was like, maybe next time when you're driving your car, you hold it a little bit more loose. And I can just tell you from my experience, you're going to come to the end and or you to your finish or to your point you want to go and maybe in a more relaxed and a ease state. And afterwards, I was asking him as well, what kind of therapy were you using? What kind of, oh, it was an Ayurvedic therapy. I've never heard about this word Ayurvedic. So I immediately went back to my hotel room and was looking, what does it mean? And so this is how I became interested into the world of conscious living when I, four weeks later, have been on a detox retreat and uh, learning about the fundamentals of Ayurveda. And then you have this gorgeous, you know, you know love story nearly, but it's actually a love story with yourself that, that took you to Los Angeles. And again, it, it was about paying attention that started that one. Exactly. So it was like, while I was going deeper in the art of conscious living, like practicing the tools of Ayurveda and also became across like the, the, the science of yoga and practicing yoga, I started to do a, on a regular base, I would call it a reflection exercise where I put myself into a, a nice surrounding and then maybe read something or look at some pictures to get inspired of. 
and then start wandering around in my mind and also maybe clearing out my mind about putting away the day-to-day -day thoughts, which are more like, oh, I have to do this and what's on the grocery list and uh, what I wanna cook for lunch or dinner. So I try to become more aware of the present moment. And then sometimes even I use my body, do some yoga exercise to, to become more into the present moment. And then I started at this particular point, I started to read some, there were some question without answers. So I answered the question for myself and remembering that one of my colleagues is living at this point in Los Angeles. And I was like, oh, I can see this could be something I'm dreaming of, like living for three months in Los Angeles. And I would say experience life itself. And as you were saying, like, Literally six months later, my container was packed and I followed the man of my love, my husband now, and uh, we choose to live in Los Angeles. But you'd actually given up um, knowingly, you consciously knew that you were going to you know, give up your, your C-suite, your ex expense account, uh, your car, your lovely handbags, and um, start again. So you you had to rebuild your entire identity. And I think that that's a key, isn't it? There's a similarity between wine and brands and yourself or ourselves. Exactly, when, yes, exactly. When I then found myself in the lovely place of Los Angeles on the sunny side, on the beach side of the West Coast in Venice Beach, California, I realized, okay, it's a really nice spot to be. Um, but as you were saying, I was giving up my whole lifestyle. I was used to have like my phone and car and everything, my friends. So I had time to reflect on what I really wanna do and how I wanna express myself. And of course, with the learnings I, I had in how to grow or build or make a wine and out of the brand building, I was able to develop a form or method or a technique for myself, how I can optimize my life for self growth and development. And you, bet you looked back at what you'd done that had worked and identified exactly the process and that's now what you call the awareness point method but it's um it's it's rooted in literally in nature in growing wine and how do you turn a grape into the finest champagne in the world and it's it's proven in the whole brand building experience that you had at this global level and you've now that's literally how you've created your life consciously and now live the you know uh, the conscious lifestyle so exactly tell me about, and it's, it, sorry tell me about the method yes exactly like the method i would say came i i was happy to have it for myself because why we was take why we were taking um self-defined break from our i call it la lifestyle as a family we went on a three months travel break so we were out of our i would say usually environment and while i was in the south of france a wonderful place to be i was doing my i say my morning routine and exercises and while I was swimming in the pool and doing like a continuous workout with my body, I came into another state of being aware of my thoughts and I could observe my own thoughts. And by doing so, I realized that I love the, the lifestyle and the, the life we have in, us, in LA. And by the time we have been there over the last 12 years, we also became a family and I, I was able to um, have a daughter, but I could still feel that there's still something missing. 
So my defined awareness point method, which helped me to become aware of my own mind and mindset, helped me to clarify what was the missing part or what was not fully expressed in my life at this moment. So uh, as I told you, I jumped again out of the pool, grabbed my journal and journal down what just popped into my mind. Um, and, you know, yeah, I love it that when you describe you, that swimming, you, you, this, this epiphany or this breakthrough was like life just wants to express itself. But, you know, if we don't see those little pings, if we don't notice them, we miss that portal to actually being able to really express it, express yourself. So, uh, so what happens when you've got this beautiful lifestyle in Los Angeles and you've got a gorgeous daughter who is gorgeous and you've now got a wine label um, and you get, uh, you, you get it, you end up journaling. What, what comes out of that? It's everything since then, hasn't it? It's, you've defined this awareness point method and you've, you've moved your whole family to your vision of what life could be like on the hillside of the Black Forest. Um, so tell me that part of the journey. Yes, so this is now your as I vision. was saying, yes, what, what, what I was saying, like I jumped out of the pool and I realized, okay, we have different, method to express of who we are, the way we dress, what we read, what we create. And I realized I want to even find a bigger container or a platform, however you want to call it, to express how I'm going to see the world. So I carried this idea with me while we were traveling back to my upgrowing countryside and stayed in the Black Forest Valley. And then I remembered that I was saying, oh, I could also see myself living in a farmhouse. So with this thought back in my head, I started searching around. And one week before we went back to our LA lifestyle, we found this gorgeous house, 400 years old and uh, still with some potential to build out. And immediately when we entered the house and we're up on the hill, I knew, and lucky enough, my husband as well, we knew together, this could be the container, the platform to express how we gonna see the world. And that's what you're doing. You're establishing a conscious living, um, well, your entire life is, is now, in you are the, you walk the talk, you are the embodiment of it. And as you say, it's not just how you dress or how you eat or your yoga practice. It's the house, it's the hillside, it's the lifestyle your daughter has, what you have with your husband. And this is where you're going to open up the space for other people to come. And that's why you call it a place of possibility. And that's in the future. So um, exactly. what, do you, what do you see, there's just a little bit of a lag there, what do you see as, um, as the world? What, what does your world look like? What do you believe it should be, our world should be? We should become on a day-to-day -day practice a little more conscious or aware, so we can, because we have every time we have to make a decision in, in our day to day, which is like kind of often, we could pause for a second and then uh, reflect on it real quick and, and maybe make a more conscious decision. If we, instead of just running and being on an autopilot, I would call it and just do what we have done all of our lives or do what we think society told us to do so. So just bring more awareness into our day-to-day -day and decide for ourselves what feels right to do and 
and you're saying that the, this you say that the, the key to this is self-management and that when exactly. you practice it it just becomes easy and you just do it as quickly as this but it allows you yeah it allows you to not miss those key moments that are very subtly vibrating underneath our awareness. Exactly. So from my point of view, I, I would say awareness is a, the baseline frequency or the baseline you should bring or into your day-to-day -day life. And out of this, and of course, with some practice, which I have under my belt now, I can do it on a really quick decision-making process, but often I still do it on a regular base in team and really going step by step through the awareness point method. Well, um, would you say that you have created your dream life and you're living it each and every time? Yes. Yes. You dreamed of being a, a winemaker and became it. You dreamed of having a of, of a global white brands and became a, a you know marketing executive at a very high level. You dreamed of going to Los Angeles so that you could um, you know li literally find the other dreams. And then you have moved your entire family to this vision of conscious living on the, on the hillside of the Black Forest Mountain uh, with the view of the Alps. So I would say that you were pretty damn sure that you were living your dream life at every step. Um, so t tell me what one takeaway do you want everyone to have from having from listening to this conversation? I can encourage everyone to have a clear vision for themselves, what they want, what they want to create, what they want to experience, how they want to express themselves. And then by holding this clear vision, it's uh, important to really work into this direction and uh, make yourself accountability or find a, someone you're going to do this project with and uh, and do it and not and you're going to yeah. miss one one minute and you're saying the key to all of this is the self management piece this knowing yourself exactly and being a, in, uh, it, it's so strong and I so believe in it i also happen to know that you are creating a journal because journaling has been such an important part of your life and it fits with your um, awareness point method, you're actually creating a journal to, to teach people how to do this. Isn't that right? That's 100% that's correct. Yes. I'm so excited. I can't wait. <laughs> so um, the, new, the new world is uh, the journal to help other people to, uh, to learn this self-management so they can't don't miss the little pings of their life and a place of possibilities are, uh, that we can come to um, and and you, and an actual embodied life life of the conscious living world it just looks like an incredible future or incredible present with an expanding future thank you so much for coming to speak to us today by satellite, on the phone. Thank you, technology. Um, <laughs> and um, it's incredible that we can speak when you're sitting on the hillsides at looking at the, you know, the, the Swiss Alps and I'm in the UK in a shed in Windsor, just down the road from the Queen's Castle. This is incredible. Um, and I can't wait for what's to come and be a part of it. Thank you for joining us. And I hope everybody comes to the festival and uh, to, uh, to hear your story more fully because it is one of incredible possibility in what is possible for us in the future. Thank you for joining me today.